Good evening, you're watching Estuary News. Coming up, we head to Haybrough to see how they're blooming in their second year of the In Bloom contest. And we head to St James Church in Louth for reflections. And my first guest tonight is David Wrightham, here to talk about the production, Half a Sixpence. And then later I'll be joined by Hull author Michael Robinson, here to talk about his book, Sectioned, dealing with mental illness. Welcome to Estuary News, I'm Emma Lingard. Now it's over to Erica Barker for the news headlines. A pedestrian crossing is to be reintroduced to Bethlehem Street in Grimsby. The original crossing was removed as part of the multi-million pound regeneration of the town centre in 2013 when a shared space was introduced at the junction of station approach. North East Lincolnshire Council admits that works led to a degree of uncertainty with pedestrians and motorists alike. There has been an increase in the number of people in Hull and the East Riding who've agreed to donate their organs after death, bucking the national trend. Between April 2014 and March 2015, 28 people across the country received life-saving transplants thanks to people from the area, having agreed to donate their organs or following discussion with relatives after their death. But already since April 2015, 20 people have been given the gift of life thanks to local people. A date has been announced for the introduction of a new toll system for the Humber Bridge, which aims to make the process speedier. Motorists will be able to use their Humber tag to pay tolls automatically and cross a bridge without stopping at a booth. Drivers will be able to apply for an account from the beginning of September, which will be activated in the first half of November. A one-way journey is to cost £1.25. Immingham are hoping to add another trophy to their ever-growing collection. They have won gold for the past three years in the East Midlands in Bloom competition. And judges have descended once again on the town to see what it has to offer when it comes to everything horticultural, including a new nature park. And Chairman Stuart Swinburne says they're confident that the hard work will pay off. We're feeling quite confident at the moment. We've been uh, working very hard for the last few weeks, obviously, and we've got a nice day, obviously, weather-wise, so we're looking forward to the tour today and, and hope that we can impress Simon with some of the things that we've been doing. You know, it all depends on what Simon sees. He may be different from the other judges. He may be looking for something different to what the other judges have to look for in the past. So we don't know, but uh, I'm sure that we've done everything that we can to try and uh, make sure that Simon has a good day today. Hull, Grimsby, Cleethorpes, Caister and Louth are also among those taking part in In Bloom. Well, the deep in Hull has made it into the top 25 in a list rating the best aquariums in Europe. The travel site Trip Advisor, part of the Traveller's Choice Awards, it was ranked 17th based on customer reviews with the Oceano in Portugal taking coveted first place. And that's all from the news. Thank you, Erica. Now, summer for the Lincolnshire and Yorkshire regions means one thing for many villages. It's in bloom season again. This year, among the first villages, it's been the turn of Habra. Richard Morris went along to see how the judging is shaping up. It's that time of year again. In Bloom judging is starting all over the county once again. I'm here in Habra, where they're hoping to beat on last year's bronze. Are in bloom judging today. Hopefully, we got a bronze last year, so I'm hoping for a little bit better this year. Uh, it does encourage us to to do, you know, uh, to go on to next year. Uh, I keep saying I'm not going to do it next year, but every year I've said, I said that last year, you know. But uh, depending on what we get and the support in the village, we will, you know, hopefully carry on. As well as carrying on in what has become a tradition in Habra, Jean hopes to impress the judges. The judging criteria require work all year round. It involves things like um, seeing what it's like in the spring, in the autumn and in the winter of course. Um, activities such as whether there's a Christmas tree or whether or not there's any choirs. Um, so it, it does it does cover you know quite a range of things but it's to try and actually um, just get a feel of what the community is doing for their village. Um, what we do is we go around to all the different villages and representatives show us around, show us all the different 
aspects of their village and we're interested in not only the plants because it is the bloom but also interested in what the community are doing and whether there's community involvement and also the environment whether the whether the village looks clean tidy um, whether or not the villagers are looking after it so it's 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 an all-round assessment and there are some real highlights for those visiting the village to go and see at the recommendation of the chair of In Bloom for Haybrough. Well, we've got a scarecrow competition running from today. Uh, that's running for up till Sunday or Monday next week. Uh, and obviously to come in and see the church, the church is going to be open today and it's open on Saturday as well. Uh, and refreshments will be available for that. But come and have a look at the scarecrows. I, I don't quite know what they're going to be like. I haven't seen them all myself, but, uh, you know, come and have a look and have a laugh. You know, that's what it's about, enjoying it. You're watching Estuary News coming up a little later. The Reverend Kate Toogood from St James Church in Louth will deliver the weekly reflections. And Erica Barker will bring you the local sports news and results. Now, what is described as the musical of musicals is to be performed in Cleethorpes this week. Half a Sixpence opens tomorrow. Directed by David Wrightham, it tells the story of Arthur Kipps, who inherits and then loses a fortune. And David is here with me now. Welcome, David, to the show. Um, what makes this musical so special? Well, I think Tommy Steele originally in yes. the film made it special. This is a, um, a rewritten version. Okay. It's got some new songs in it, but all the favourite songs are still there. It was written for Gary Wilmot in the West End, and this is the version we were bringing to the stage. Right. And it is, when you see it, it's a great play, great story, and great songs. And normally, I suppose, class act is known for more serious dramas. Yes. This is a bit of a... a you know, stage <laughs> yes. left, right? Yeah, this is, the, this is the first time we've ever staged a musical as part of a season. Okay. There are seven class act productions this year and we decided to put the, the musical right in the middle because we think if we do it in the summer, we'd attract, you know, the holiday yes. makers looking for something to do and a show to go to, yeah. uh, put Clee Thoughts a bit on the map with a musical. Um, and yeah, we, we've enjoyed doing it. It's been yeah. really good fun. Like you said, there are some really exciting songs in there is it oh, flashbang yes. wallops one flash of them, isn't wallop, it? yes flashbang wallop everybody's <laughs> favorite and it's repeated obviously <laughs> the audience do tend to clap and sing along with that but there's other ones if the rain's going to fall half a sixpence of course yes and yeah. building a mansion now you you probably might not know that but it's a mm. really popular song you'll know it when you when hear you it when you hear it it's yes. one of those now yeah. the story itself then the, who plays Arthur then uh, Rob Bishop uh, he's he's, uh, he's been at Class Act for 15, 16 years now. Uh, he's also a professional singer, right. uh, so he's the leading role. It is still the biggest leading role in musical theatre. No right. one's ever broken that record. Okay. Arthur Kipp steps on the stage at the beginning and he's still there when the curtain closes. Right. It's a very, very gruelling part. I was say, it sounds very demanding. Absolutely. He goes off for seconds at a time and in that time he's got to get changed. So we have to have an army of people backstage for stuff like that. Dressers right. and hairdressers and quick change miracle workers yeah. to make these performers do this show. Oh. It's a lively show, very lively, singing and dancing in every scene. But it's a great story. Which is what you want, isn't it? And it starts tomorrow at the Parkway does. Cinema, doesn't it? And runs mm. to the 24th <clears throat> yes. of July. It's uh, Tuesday to Friday inclusive and it's 8pm nightly. OK, that's brilliant. And... Class Act itself, it's your is it the 15th anniversary next year? It's 16. 16. 16th anniversary next year. No, I'm making a mistake. Oh, it's you're making it up now, don't you? These theatre types. Fib. Yeah, it's the 15th <laughs> anniversary next year. And um, we're having a, a, a celebration. I was going to yeah. say, you're going to put on a big years. show, are you? Class Act is a very rare company in the UK because we only ever present premier productions. Right. We don't present other written work, we present right. our own productions. Yes. And yeah. so next year there are, there'll be a mixture of the favourites right. and a new one. Wow, well it sounds great. I hope you'd come back and you'll talk to us about your anniversary. Absolutely, yeah. But fingers, well it's break a leg isn't it for tomorrow? Break a leg, yeah. Break a leg. So just to remind people, half a sixpence is from tomorrow to Friday at Cleethorpe's Parkway Cinema. Thank you for coming in. <laughs>
Right, now it's time for our weekly reflections. And this week it's the Reverend Kate Toogood from St. James Church in Louth. Thank you. Two very simple words, and words that I'm currently trying to teach my toddler to say. They're words that roll off the tongue, words that we use every day in shops or restaurants, whether sincerely or habitually. But I believe that these words can lose their power, and a real deep sense of thankfulness is more than these transient transactions. I was challenged recently to pray a very old prayer of thanksgiving to God for the blessings in my life, for the things that I would perhaps have taken for granted, and this genuinely has changed my outlook. We know that life can have difficulties and challenges. We can envy those around us for the things they have or the things we perceive them to have, but a real sense of thankfulness can help with this immensely. If you have a faith as I do, we can say thank you for, to God for the blessings in our lives. But if not, we can still say thank you to those around us, for those who show us support and encouragement, those we may take for granted, but those people and situations for whom we are truly blessed and truly thankful. So my challenge to myself as well as to everyone else is to say thank you to those who we perhaps forget to and give a real, true sense of meaning to those two simple words. Mental health is a subject many still will not talk about and some will hide their mental illness for fear of discrimination. My next guest has experienced just that and hopes that by having written about it, it will raise awareness. Michael Robinson's book is called Sectioned and charts his time in the armed services and dealing with mental illness. Now, welcome, Michael, to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, you were diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. Just briefly explain to us, what does that actually mean? Schizoaffective disorder is a form of schizophrenia, which, um, although I don't physically hear voices or anything like that, um, the emotional side of things, I'll have uh, delusional thoughts right. and, and things like that, um, and become quite agitated, aggressive, okay. and, and stuff like that. that. That's the symptoms. Okay. Um, it, I was first diagnosed at 17 um, through substance misuse when right. I was younger. I had quite a difficult childhood growing up. My me, me father was a drinker, he was violent to my mother. Uh, the, they got divorced and my mother trained as a solicitor and so she mm -hmm. was working all hours God sent. So uh, I fell in with the wrong crowd and started misusing. Okay, and from there you obviously then went and had a career in the army, did yeah, you? Yeah, very good, very well. successful career. So what happened when you were in the army? Did w Were you at that time being treated for your disorder? I was being treated, but I didn't disclose I'm a medical when I joined my condition for obvious reasons. And then when I passed out, I won most improved recruit out of about 80 men. All the time, the MOD in the army didn't know about anything about my condition. And I did quite well in the army. I did four years good service, including yeah. the parachute regiment. Uh, I was earmarked for special forces at which point I came down with hypothermia on the Brecon Beacons in Wales. Right. And as protocol, the MOD looked into my medical records and found I'd not disclosed on the medical uh, when I joined about my schizoaffective disorder. So what happened at that point then? Unfortunately for me, uh, the CO said, look, Robinson, we can have you in if you're not on medication. So I took it upon myself to come off the medication and unfortunately become very ill, which ended up in two terms in prison while I was ill and then being locked up indefinitely in a psychiatric hospital. Um, a medium secure psychiatric hospital in New Yorkshire. Okay, so uh, at that time, I mean, I know you've, you've written the book sectioned about that. Do, do you find that you were discriminated at all? Absolutely, the reason I lost my job was because I was discriminated against because as far as the MRD concerned, they want people that are totally perfect. Uh, unfortunately, the Equality Act 2010 uh, is exempt from the armed services, the police force, right. the fire brigade, um, which is in breach of the Human Rights Act. But I can't challenge it because there's no political will from the legal establishment or the legal class right. to challenge it. Um, you find when it comes to employment, I can't even foster or adopt children. Okay. Not that I'd want to, but um, 
the point is the discrimination's still there. It's almost like being black or Irish in the 60s or 70s where right. discrimination was, was rife. It, it seems that we haven't caught up w when it comes to mental illness about the discrimination around it. And I can well understand why people do keep do keep it to themselves when they yes. go through employment. Yeah. I mean, today then, are you still on medication? Are you oh, being treated yeah. still? This is not something that will go away tomorrow. No, no. Um, compliance with medication is the key to keeping me stable and well. And I don't take a lot of medication at that. Um, the, the, the amount of medication I take, the MOD could easily accommodate that, especially right. if I was to go into the reserve forces. Okay. It's the same for the police force or the fire brigade, but again, um, they will not have, they will not accept it because we're all Annabelle Lecters and Norman Bates, you know. But this must be very hard because you're not the only person. Frustrating. Uh, uh, are it's you? frustrating and um, I get quite annoyed with it really. It's not good enough really in this, in this day and age. We've got so many rights, uh, quality rights, but the, the don't come into play when it comes to mm -hmm. mental illness. What gets me is it's not how well the condition is managed, it's the condition that, that bars you and no consideration is taken into how well you can function. Right. Now, you've obviously written the book, and we know we've, we've got, we've got um, a picture here sectioned. Um, did that help you at all in address maybe things that were going through your mind? I think for people that aren't aware of mental illness, it will open doors and realise that people, that service users, are real people as well. And... Um, it wasn't so much therapy. I, when I came out of hospital in 2009, um, I had a lot of time on my hands and not a lot right. to do. Uh, I'd, I'd recently completed a college course where I won student of the year. Right. And that got me a place to read law at university. But unfortunately, I started writing the book and so something I had to give. And, <laughs> and sadly, I'd, the course did. Yeah, maybe I should have <laughs> stuck to law and made a lot richer. Something maybe you can go back to. Well, I, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> But th this is it, you, you've, you've written the book and hopefully people, I mean, will read that and think, gosh, you know, what, everything that you've had to go through and what you're up against, really. Uh, yeah, it's, it's written along the same lines of like an Andy McNabb or a Chris Ryan. I, I always read, I was always fascinated by their books growing up because they forced a career for themselves. Yes. They had similar backgrounds to myself. And um, if you're into Andy McNabbs and, and stuff like that, then I'm sure you'll, you'll find it fascinating. Yeah. And I know a lot of people have said it is not a light-hearted read absolutely either, is not. it? No, absolutely Brilliant. not. What's and all? What's and all? Needs to be sometimes, doesn't it? Well, mm. that's all we've got time for. Thank you very Thanks much so for much coming for in me. for that. Thank you. Now joining me to look back over the weekend's news is Dan Kemp. Dan. Good evening. Have we got anything exciting? You well, always have exciting stories. Well, I wouldn't have said this one was exciting to oh, start with. No. Serious. This is a serious one. Driffield Times and Post is stories from. This is Humberside police officers are warning residents in rural communities to be on the lookout for diesel thieves and poachers. It's that time of year again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's really? exactly what they're saying. In the summer yeah. months. Apparently this is the thing to be looking out for in rural communities and of course because people are more isolated in rural communities in terms of distance from neighbours and things like that it becomes more of a crime and people don't really seem to perceive it as are that. Are they, the diesel, are they targeting farms or businesses that have Mainly got Mainly machinery, yeah. yeah, places like farms of course that have the machinery and obviously need, need the fuel to, to run it. Because it's coming up to harvest time. It has a major impact in the victim. This is what one of the rural crime officers said. It affects their livelihood and their ability to do business with machinery, which yeah. of course is still not damaged. And it's the fear of crime in the isolated locations, which I just said, that obviously people sometimes don't have that kind of support network. Right. Because so people on the need road. to be vigilant. Poachers and fuel. Yes. What else have you come across? The second story is from the Scunthorpe Scorpions. This is in the Scunthorpe, Scunthorpe Telegraph. Scorpions. Scunthorpe Scorpions, which is the uh, local speedway team, okay. they had a sit-in protest during their last race against the <laughs> Ipswich Witches, which lost 47-43. But during that, one of their riders actually broke his hand and he Ooh. believed, or the team believed, that that was as a result of foul play. And so they had a sit-in. Did, did it amount to anything? That was at stage 10. and stage 11, they had this sit-in protest to say... So we're not happy about this. The referee should have taken it further. Did the referee do and anything? No, he reported it to Speedway con the Speedway Control Bureau, but the person who 
did the alleged offence still, was allowed to ride on, and in the end, it was switch one. So it's not good for Scunthorpe. It's not, is it's it? It's not, and not good for the guy who broke his hand either. No, that's not, and you have to be very quick now. One very <laughs> quick story then, this is like toxic that, giant it. hogweed. Um, toxic hogweed. Yeah, reports that this has been seen all over the country in recent weeks, and it's just looking out for the uh, substance which prevents the body from protecting itself from UV light and can lead to severe burns. Because it leaves blisters, doesn't it? And these it can go up to three skin. metres high, purple stalks with a kind of a white flat Yes, we're sending you out flower. to find some, I think. Well, we need to, yeah, we need to warn people about that. Thank you very much for that, Dan. Now it's over to Erica Barker with the sport. In the Hull Derby on Friday night, Hull FC beat City Rivals Hull KR 22 points to 12, securing their place in the Super League's top eight, but a third consecutive defeat for the Robins. Hull City kicked off their 2015-16 pre-season campaign with a 2-1 victory over North Ferriby United in the Billy Bly Memorial Trophy, and Grimsby Town kept up their 100% winning record in pre-season with a 3-1 victory at Gainsborough Trinity. Nathan Arnold gave gave the Mariners an early lead before Mark Newsham levelled the scores in the second half. But new striker Pudraig Amond was on hand to regain the lead six minutes before time and grabbed his second three minutes later to confirm the win. And Grimsby Town will head to Grantham in the Lincolnshire Senior Cup, but it won't take place on Wednesday. Following tomorrow night's clash with Huddersfield, the Mariners were set to head south of the country. But Paul Hurst's side, who won the competition last season, are waiting for a date. Scunthorpe United's pre-season programme continued on Saturday night with a 1-1 draw against championship outfit Middlesbrough in a behind-closed-doors friendly in Spain. Cricket now, Yorkshire's Johnny Burstow has done his chances of an England recall no harm after a century on the opening day of their county champion match at Scarborough. Along with captain Andrew Gale, their pair puts on 254 runs for their fourth cricket partnership against Worcestershire. And that's the latest from the sports. That's it for tonight. If you have a new story, visit our Facebook, Twitter pages, email news at estuary.tv or pick up the phone and call us on Grimsby 315553. Until tomorrow, good night. Hello and welcome to Estuary TV's weather. Tuesday rather cloudy and breezy with the odd light shower and highs around 20 degrees. Wednesday a mix of sunny intervals and scattered showers.